welcome to Princeton. And it turns out I, 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 I have been teaching in this uh, lecture hall for many years, so it's home for me. But I, I, I welcome you to feel home as well. Uh, OK, so I will talk about the experimental uh, aspects of topological insulators. It's great that Charlie has covered the theory in some great detail, so, uh, is, uh, so that made my job much easier. And uh, so I will, instead of trying to review part of that, I'll just assume that all of you are, are well aware of, of the theoretical development now. So I will let the experiment reveal what the theory tells. So if something is not clear, you, you're seeing that the experiments are not really telling what the theory is, uh, have, theorists have been telling us, feel free to shout back, okay? So I'll let experiments talk. Uh, whether uh, 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 the topological insulators are real or not. Okay, so, uh, so since I'm not going to review the theory, but I will follow, there are many different, as you know, there are many different ways of introducing topological physics in kind of matter, and uh, my presentation will follow naturally uh, 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 based on this type of literature that, uh, that, that are out there. There are other ways of introducing the topic, so I encourage you to read those as well. Uh, but naturally, these, these reviews are written in connection to, uh, close connection to experiments. So, so uh, these reviews will help you follow the experimental development of the field. Okay, so I'm, I'm supposed to be uh, giving three lectures on this topic. They're more like talks, and so I, I, I sort of organize them in certain ways. So the first one will talk, well, the one, the first one will focus mostly on topological insulators, and that is the story of helical Dirac fermion. So, and then I will uh, sort of uh, walk over the phase diagram of topological insulators, mo the most general case of 3D, and come down to lower dimensions. Uh, and then, uh, uh, what is the nature of this topological phase transition and related topological insulators? For example, topological crystalline insulator, what happens when you magnetize them? Uh, and then I'll try to address a little bit, is there, uh, is there a possibility for realizing a condo type topological insulator with some condo physics? Uh, uh, so, and then the second lecture will focus on, mostly on topological superconductors based on the first lecture, the topological insulators. There are many, topological superconductor is not a new topic. There are many, uh, many things have happened, both theory, in theory and experiment. So in this particular lecture, I'll focus on uh, superconductivity in to, uh, based on topological insulators. Uh, uh, basically, the helical pairing, how helical pairing in topological insulators uh, uh, leads to a uh, Maurana platform. And then the third topic, I will go to a new paradigm. So topological insulator and superconductors, they both have gaps. So they are gap states of matter. So now uh, that way of thinking, it looks like uh, you must have a gap for, to classify uh, those systems. Otherwise, the boundary modes are not stable. When you close the gap, the boundary modes are, there's nothing to protect them. So there is a, there is a clever way uh, around it. Uh, uh, so in other words, there is, it is true that the topological, uh, there, is a, there, is, there is a gapless topological physics, topological systems, the, the topological metals or semi-metals more precisely, uh, uh, where uh, your uh, quasi-particles, the bulk quasi-particles are vile fermions, and uh, uh, incidentally or accidentally, the vile fermion its experimental discovery was just reported uh, last week, so so this is a very exciting topic, and this is this is very interesting because now these are, if you like, gapless topological insulators, and and on their surfaces instead of Dirac fermions, you have uh, uh, you have a fractionalized Fermi surface in on the on 2D. In 3D, of course, it's uh, it's connected to the other surface, but if you look at it from the from the top, it looks like half of the Fermi surface is missing. And uh, I have been working on, uh, in measuring Fermi surface for many years, maybe 20 years by now. Uh, this is the most bizarre experimental uh, thing I have seen, uh, what happened to my other half of the Fermi surface. So this is, this is going to be the focus of the third uh, lecture. And then um, 
and these fractional Fermi surfaces do uh, all sorts of exotic things. So they form a 2D exotic metal, 2D topological metal, and then they lead to all sorts of anomalies. I may or may not have time to do talk about that. This is work in progress, but I may hint to the future of the field uh, along this line. And then, again, if I have time, I may also uh, say a few words what happens if you induce Cooper pairing in this fractional Fermi surfaces. So that's very, very bizarre stuff. So we are really pushing the frontier. Okay. So uh, the first two lectures would be more pedagogical because they are more well established. And this is more research or frontline research oriented. But I like to, everywhere I lecture in summer schools, I like to mix and match some frontier stuff, some pedagogical well established stuff. OK, so by now you, you are familiar that beyond the broken symmetry, there is a classification scheme that is uh, prominent both in particle physics, topological field theories, and condensed matter physics, topological phases of matter. Here, it's not the broken symmetry that is the key uh, concept, but the topological invariance. Instead of order parameter describing a new state, your in new invariance describe the new state. And I mean, that has been covered. Um, I just wanted to uh, flash a slide uh, bringing that. So, so, so th this is the slide that, I my, th that covers the theme of my talk, that in condensed matter physics, we have insulators, metals, magnets, superconductors. That is the Kito's book or Ashcroft Marmin book. In last uh, seven, eight years or so, what happened is that we have uh, the topological part of counterpart of the insulator. We call it topological insulator. Uh, these are, uh, and then we can magnetize them. There is some uh, topological effects in magnet as well. And then uh, uh, metals, as I said, there are Fermi arc, 2D Fermi arc metals. They're like fractional Fermi surface with bulk vile fermions. And then in superconductors, you have uh, helical Cooper pairing. They, they don't. Uh, they can uh, escape a, a conventional BCSS state. And luckily, topology, topology, as you know, as you heard from the last talk, it's about bulk boundary correspondence. So we need an experimental technique to probe the bulk of a material and the surface of a material. And that is what I'm going to be talking about. And all these images are from uh, angular resolved photo emission spectroscopy data. Uh, 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 I, it's mostly from my group. Uh, uh, my students are here, so each student's uh, PhD thesis is attached to one of these images in the last few years. So, so the, this, this technique allows you to probe the surface, that is the boundary, and the bulk, that is uh, the, uh, the electronic excitations in the bulk. And then what we do is that see whether there is a correspondence between the bulk and boundary. So, uh, so at the end of the third lecture, I will show the, what I, will, I, I say is the emergence of topological condensed matter physics. That, that is the exciting thing. And now we have realization of all of that stuff. OK, so uh, it did not happen out of the blue. There are, uh, so angular result photoemission spectroscopy is not new. It goes back to Einstein, really. Photo photo what we are doing is the uh, modern version of Einstein's photoelectric effect with uh, integrating modern technology as the technology has developed. Our experimental precision has developed as well. And so this technique is not, not really new. I did not invent that technique, of course. Uh, it has been around for uh, half the century. Uh, but what is happening is that now we have new problems to deal with. So we have to develop new routines for the experiments and new developments. And many of these experiments are uh, carried out at uh, various national labs where these huge accelerators run on a billion dollar budget or, or, or uh, construction costs. So we, we are partly involved in those beamline construction. And we also have labs down here in the basement. Actually, I, can, I have a secret way to go to my lab. It's, it takes only uh, uh, 80 seconds to go from here to my lab. So, uh, so, so all these developments are critical to, to, to realize these new, uh, uh, these new phases of matter. So, it, uh, uh, so I'm not going to review that. That might be boring for you. So now I'll jump into uh, the key results. So uh, as you have heard that uh, in 2D, the first 2D topological uh, insulator is the, in some way is the, is the, char is the 
is the quantum Hall effect, right? Integer quantum Hall effect, and you have chiral edge states. So you have the gap in the in the bulk, and then you have the chiral edge states that breaks time reversal symmetry. And if you take, and this is described by one invariant, that's the churn number, right? You heard from the last talk. And then you, if you consider two copies of the integer quantum Hall states, and then uh, if you that that allows you to uh, um, that allows you to make a time reversal invariant state. You take two counter propagating uh, states, a spin up and down, uh, and then they are held together by Rashba, and that's the Cade Milley paper in 2005, and that uh, led, uh, gave birth to this time reversal invariant uh, topological insulator. But it's also described by one invariant. So in this case, it's the Z2 invariant. So you can think of Z2 invariant instead of a number, it's a parity. It's a par product of the parity of the wave functions, right? So Charlie told you all of that. So the consequence of that is that you'll get uh, counter-propagating spin momentum locked uh, edge states on the, on the boundary of the sample. And then, uh, so then you can, uh, uh, so then these, uh, the edge, these edge states, they are protected from backscattering. So uh, uh, shortly after that, uh, so yes. So I'm, I'm getting to that. So in this case, you are not physically taking two copies of gallium arsenide or heterostructure and put them together. In this case, the two copies are created by the natural spin orbit interaction that is present in some sample. So the spin orbits are interaction term is per time reversal invariant. It's, uh, so the spin orbit term gives you the velocity dependent uh, field, right? So, so the spin orbit gives you a spin up field and the down field and both are in place. So uh, that engineering is not done artificially, rather it's by choosing the material which does it for you naturally. Yeah, so th those are, yeah. Okay, so uh, what is interesting in that if you take a quantum Hall state and stack them, it actually it connects to your question naturally. Uh, can you get, if you take gallium arsenide, these heterostructures, if you stack them in the Z direction, can you get a 3D quantum Hall state? In other words, now you have, in, a, in the 2D film, you have, the, uh, you have the edge states, right? Now you stack them on the side surfaces, of course, then the edge states will become surface states. But this, this does not guarantee that you'll have a surface state on the top surface, on the bottom or the bottom surface, right? So, in other words, this stacking, linear stacking of the uh, of the uh, 2D topological insulator, will not necessarily give you a protected 3D state. So, so, uh, so it, uh, this is also true for the quantum Hall case. If you stack the quantum Hall, you have the chiral edge states, and then you stack them, so the edge 1D edge becomes you as you stack, they become a surface state surrounding that, right? So this is not protected. So, uh, so what is very, very interesting that uh, in the spin orbit case, if you do that uh, spin orbit time reversal invariant case, then there is a way, uh, then, then you don't need that extra. So the other, another way of saying that, experimentally speaking, that to create that 2D state, you have to apply a magnetic field, and then the, your chiral edge states are uh, with respect to the magnetic field, right? So in 3D, when you try to magneti apply magnetic field, then you have already chosen a direction. You cannot create another edge state. Uh, so, so the edge state chirality is already chosen. So that does not give you a full envelope of that state. Uh, so, so this is the problem why you cannot uh, get a 3D or higher dimensional topological state in um, with quantum Hall, uh, quantum Hall physics. So that's not, it's not described by new topological invariant. It's, uh, it's always uh, just a combination of the 2D state. Um, yeah. These, these layers that you're constructing, yeah. it's, is it that their thickness is just significantly smaller than the perpendicular yeah. directions? Is yes. it like one atom layer thick, right? Uh, it could be little more than that. Uh, so you don't, yeah, I mean. Right, effectively, two, the electron dispersion relation is two-dimensional. So the electrons E, K, E versus K, its motion is band structure, the electron motion is 2D. So, something I never understood about these band structures, you're writing down 
one dimension for momentum, even though you have a two-dimensional system. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, so this is uh, I'm showing that k x in the k y direction you have the same thing. For example, here. Yeah, but k y you don't have that symmetry. So what symmetry? No, I mean this is uh, think of a think of a circular sample, not. Oh, I see. That picture is actually three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, the the best way to think of that that uh, the samples actually we, the way we are drawing is what is the way it is in the lab. But the best way to think of it is of a circular sample geometry. Then that x y has no special meaning, right? So how you use that? So uh, th these are don't. I mean, I, I'm my job is to explain you all that in the next few slides. So this is, I'm just sort of trying to introduce, yeah. So actually, if, if, this, if this was just one atom layer thick, you wouldn't even know if you had edge states, right? Because no, no, it's not necessarily one atom layer thick. It's, you can't find the electrons so that their dispersion relation is 2D. Right. It, it, they don't have significant 3D dispersion. So it, that does not have to be have in to one atom layer. So yes. Right, right. Actually, in, in reality, they're confined. They're trapped between other layers of that. They're, 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 they're quantum well states you can confine into the. So, uh, yeah, question? With the quantum spin world effect, I understand you don't have to apply magnetic field. Yeah. And you say it's effectively like you have two integer particles that are on top of each other. It's more like two copies of Holden model put together by a Rashba term. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have the, the first gap, once you have a gap, there's a natural Landau level there. In other words, you don't have a higher order Landau level. So it's that sort of analogy, right? So in other words, in, in the quantum, integer quantum hull, you can go from one Landau level to other. You can do that by tuning your field knob. Here, you are stuck. The material uh, band structure details already set you for something. OK. So uh, in the 3D case, uh, now, it turns out in 3D there is a new topological state which is not a stacked generalization of the 2D. So, um, uh, oh, okay, good. Yeah, it, I think it's dying or something. The, oh. Uh, I, I could use, thanks. It's, uh, I could it's just. really powerful, don't shine it at <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, um, so in, in, in the 3D case, uh, let me tell you the experimental aspect of it. As I said, if you stack them, then that gives you side surface, that will, that will give you surface states on the side sur surfaces. The edge states will, 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 will pile up in that way, even if you have a perfect sample. But the 3D topological insulator, Without showing you the invariant, I'm sure Charlie showed you that. Uh, what is the physical realization that tells you it's strange? It's strange in the sense in all surfaces, it has these helical, helical state, helical pair, uh, pair states in a Dirac form. So in other words, it's not, uh, there is no special surface. There is no stacking or anything. And it's not only that, uh, no matter which uh, surface you chop, it, it will have that. It will have odd number of Dirac fermion spin momentum lock. It doesn't depend on the chemistry, and that is what is making, that is its manifestation that it's topological. That in, in, uh, so connecting back to the pre-TI era, current matter physicists always saw, knew about surface states. There, there are so many, there's surface state in silicon and gallium arsenide and all sorts of materials under various conditions. So what is, uh, unusual about topological insulators and their surface states is that in, in those cases, the silicon surface state depends on the particular termination. What is the atomic structure of the terminated surface? How the uh, bands are connect? How, the, how they reconstruct on the surface? So that gives rise to the surface state. Here it is a different type. It does not, this odd number of Dirac fermion spin momentum lock, lock this is a property Universe, this is a universal property in the sense that no matter how you chop uh, any the surface, cut the, cut the surface open, there will always be, it, it, it does not, that 